Now that was just one example of a visualization, getting still in the silence. We create, we've talked about this before, you create the kind of silence that works best for you in your circumstances. But the idea is the same. Angela, just for fun, you're one of the persons who are not sure yet what your passion is. Did anything come to you or did you ask what your passion might be? There's no wrong answer, you know. Okay. And what you do when you are trying to work on your life and figuring out your passion, your dreams, your goals, your desires, what we have to do is learn to ask for messages. And we have to learn to listen. And we ask, I'm going to use the word God. You know, we've been here before, higher power, Allah, Buddha. Um, oh, Lord, I forgot the rest of it. But anyway, <laughs> whoever you subscribe to, some sort of higher power. You ask that higher power to, to show you what to do, to help you do it, and how to do it. And then we learn to listen for our messages, which can come from, perhaps I say something that's inspirational, and that light bulb goes on in the back of your head. Perhaps, Yvonne, you're reading a book, and some message comes off the pages, as, and, that, and you somehow, magically, or whatever, we always know our message when we get it. Have any of you had that, ex you've had yeah. that experience? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for certain things. Yeah, it does work. And you just kind of know. Yeah. And you, or you could simply be standing at the kitchen sink washing dishes. Have any of you ever had the light bulb thing uh -huh. where something, it just, that's for real. Oh, you that's your voice. Huh? Oh, you hear a voice. You hear a voice. Somebody talking to you. Yeah, it's those who subscribe to that, yes. Um, and some people do claim that they can actually hear voices. Now, I'm not talking about schizophrenia, but they, you know, you hear inspirational voices. Yeah. It could be you're watching, oh, I don't know, Joel Osteen, T.G. T.D. Jakes, um, uh, oh, Joyce Myers, Oprah Soul Sunday. I can't, I can't get own or whatever she's got. I miss it so much, but yeah. So what, maybe it's somebody inspirational on TV. So you learn to keep asking God or your higher power to show you to you know show you what to do, tell you what to do, and ask for help. That way, it begins to come through to you. Now, does it come through instantly? No. no. Well, oh, it could. It could. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times, we have to keep repeating. What? What? When? It comes through a train of thought. Uh huh. Yeah. So it may come to us instantly. Or it could take 30 years uh, <laughs> before it's revealed unto us, okay? But that's a chance that we have to take. Now, most of you do have an idea, and I was trying to get you to be to elaborate a little more, Cecilia, but we have an idea of what we want to do. And so the second question is, what do we have to do to get our dream position that expresses our passion? Now, we've got all kind of answers. But we have to figure out this five-step plan to get you even to the point where those of you who uh, don't know your passion, you begin to under, you begin to get a sense of what it might be. And can your passion change? Yes. yes. Lord, yes. So what's true for you now, Ricarda, at age 29? Uh, don't look at me in that tone of voice. <laughs> uh, may not be true when you're 49. So you, you pursue your passion based on how you're feeling now and where you are now with your dreams and hopes and desires. You don't believe me? How many of you have the same dreams and hopes that you had when you were 12? Nobody does. But let me back up a little bit. How many of you remember when you were a little girl, little, little girl, what you wanted to be when you grow up? Maria, Mary, right? When you were a little, little girl, did you want to be anything in particular? No, I just wanted to be a mom. You wanted to be a mom? Okay. All right. Lynette? Yes. What? A teacher. You wanted to be a teacher. Fine. Teacher? What about you? I don't remember. Okay. All right. But the point is, there is a lot of truth to what we wanted to be as a little, little kid is what our real passion is. And if life allows, that's what we should become as adults. 
okay? Mm -hmm. Now even, you know, these little child prodigies who, mm -hmm. where you've got kids who are into the arts or dancing or singing or playing instruments or sports or whatever it might be, let them pursue that. Mm -hmm. Look at, we didn't turn out so good after a while, but look at Tiger Woods when he was two playing, yeah. you know, and I guess, I don't know whether it was his dad strictly making him or he expressed an interest and went about getting the training to develop that interest. Other people, ice skaters, it doesn't matter. But when you when we're little, so don't discourage your children and your new grandbaby. If they want to be a giant purple people eater, okay. encourage that. Okay? Because that's that's why we're so messed up. Life got in our way and we allowed all this life's mess to keep us from pursuing our dreams and our passions. Because right this minute, if I ask you to raise your hand, how many of you would be living the most fulfilling life that you possibly could? None of us. None of us. I mean, we might be well on our way to doing stuff, but none of us are at that point where we are living the most fulfilling life we can. Somebody, uh, Cecilia, you were talking about Oprah. It hit on the internet a month or two ago that her own network OWN network even. Mm -hmm. Even the powerful Oprah had moments of depression or had or just was wondering about giving up some of her stuff. So none of us, no matter where we are in life, are living totally at the, the highest level. So it's a work in progress. Okay. Because we all have up and downs in life. But of course Don't we remain the same. That's everything yeah. changes. Just like when I was younger. I wanted to be an airline stewardess. Uh -huh. And then I found out you had to be a certain way. Uh -huh. And I wanted to do it because I wanted to travel free. Yes, I got you. And then when I seen how many planes went down, that kind of was a deterrent. Uh -huh. And then after I had my children, I said, well, I'm not going to be that sad six. Uh -huh. You know, after I start eating like a pig. Okay. And uh, then. Uh, I had to go to college and, you know, help my kids. After I had four kids, I said, well, oh, that thought is gone. And then I start pursuing another career, which was social work, because I like working with people. So that's all together just disappeared. Mm -hmm. But when I was a younger girl, I always wanted to be an airline steward. And I what, has, travel. what <laughs> has happened with the airline flight attendant industry since even I wanted to be? A flight attendant, but was too chubby and not uh, quite uh, tall enough. She had to right. be like a model back right. then. Right, really had to be yeah. small. Yeah, but what has yeah. happened? They changed. They got men doing it. They got men doing it as well as women. And women's statistics older have changed. People. You are older people. You don't have to be five foot eleven and what, right. like Twiggy. And, right. So right. the and industry changes, right. which means yeah. that the, there may right. be ways for us to participate in it. So let us suppose. Let, let, us, let us just speak on Ricarda for a moment. I think Can they had fantasies of how pe they thought people would be, but they had to realize that people would change. They weren't going to stay skinny all their life. So they had some deterrence that they had to Oh, really corporate face. changes. Right. Yes, corporate changes. Mm -hmm. But let's suppose, Ricarda, if you still could be involved with the airline industry and travel, would you? I don't think so. Not now with the terrorist things going on now. And don't let going anything down. stand in your way. Don't let terrorists, baggage, luggage, economics. But right this minute, if you if that was if that's part of your dream or passion, I like to travel. Yeah. And I love flying on planes too because they get there faster. You have to wait. <laughs> so discount. So how could she do that? At this point in life, how could she still be involved with? Travel by plane. But train, you had to train, go to training for it. What, but what could you be and do if you couldn't be a flight attendant at this stage? Travel agent. Travel agent. What's another? You could be a pilot. People that get the ticket. An air traffic controller. Okay, and the ticket, well, that's pushing it, but I'm not going to discount it. I'm not going to But yeah, the, the baggage, the, the, the check, the, those People that stand at the desks. Right, right. <laughs> what are they called? Agents. Agents. Oh, they get agents. And yeah. and what do they get to do? Well, we well, meet and meet people. Beyond that. Book people for flight. Beyond that. 
How do they travel? They get discounts. Discounts and travel. Right, 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 right. So that the people are still making these work hard. (laughs) (laughs) So see, the the idea is there are ways to achieve your passion if you want to commit to it. So the first thing we have to do in this five-step action plan is you have to figure it out, Angela, which may not be right away, and then claim it. And I mean it when I said for the moment, don't let the baggage of life stop you. Take away your dreams. Take away your your dreams. Life's life's plan is to make us crazy. And it does a fine job. But that is why the world is so messed up. And the basic reason why the world is so messed up, simply people don't have a good self-image. They don't have good self-esteem and they are not pursuing their passions. Mm -hmm. If everybody were doing that which they love to do, (laughs) as long as it doesn't hurt themselves or others, our universe wouldn't be such a mess. Okay, so take a moment. I, huh, what, huh? Please, Lynette, feel free. Well, I'm seeing some young people and because of the finances and the level or how everyone feel they should live here in America. It's like passion is going out the window and people look and say, okay, if I finish college, I can get 100,000 in this position, but you're not even going after. Like some people is talking about going, I've heard young people talking about they want to go to nursing school. They, they don't even care for people and want to do nursing, but they figure this is a profession you can travel all over with and stuff. So I'm saying the passion is like dying so much because everybody going for the figures. Like you say, I'm going to go to school to be an accountant. You don't even like math. And so of course it makes your struggle a little bit harder. You know, trying to go after what you're trying to do. Well, go that's after. part of what happened to our world. Our right. Planet. And our country in particular, because not every country is as messed up as we are, excluding the terrorist countries, okay? But the reason we are so messed up as adults is because, again, with our country, we we have our self-esteem and self-image taken away when we're very young, okay? We don't know who we are. We're misguided because we always are focusing on the externals. Right. We look at Mr. and Mrs. Jones. We look at what the what Wall, Wall Street, yeah, whichever street tells us what we should buy, and and whatever we should you know have in our homes and and all this other stuff. If and people are so mistaken now because the the work, career world is no longer the same. Right. So they think that they're just going after the money with nursing or whatever it might be. But that's, you know why? Because we're external oriented. Somebody, here I go, Lester. Somebody, meaning, and I don't mean anything, but you know how I feel about politicians and religious leaders over and beyond what our parents say and do and tell us. But the whole purpose of of religious leaders and politicians is to do what? Lead you. No, not lead us. Well, in the way, yeah. Control what? Control what? We could, the politics and religion control our thinking. Now, this is a Sue Johnson personal belief. I believe that you can subscribe to any religious belief or political belief as long as it is healthy, as long as it allows you to think for yourself independently. But that is, as a culture, that's been stomped out of us. Think about it. When I was a young person, what, what were the careers open to me, do you think, at the time? Secretary. Secretary. Teaching. Teaching. Nursing. Oh, nursing and library. Right. Yeah. Four, four basic choices for an African-American female back in the day. Oh, working we, in the kitchen and cleaning up. No, well, that too, because I started at St. Luke's Hospital in the dietary department Woo-hoo. as a teenager. Okay, I started there. That was my first official paid job at like a dollar eighteen an hour. Wow. And thought we were living. You know? So, but that's that's what we have to overcome, and that's why if you want to help future generations, you start with not only yourself but your children at home and your grandchildren. Maria, what were we gonna say? I, I was actually building on what she said. Yes, ma'am. My oldest daughter just went to college. 
and um, all her friends are like, I want to be a vet, I want to be this, <laughs> and she wants to work in a museum. And she looked it up, and it's like starting salary is only 26000 Yes. And she was like, well, all my friends are going to make more than me. Mm -hmm. And I said, do what you want to do. Don't go looking for the dollar amount. Go to school and you know, get your degree, and if you come out and you're making less, so what? You're going to be happy. And my son wants to be a coach. And my other daughter wants to be an actress. All jobs where parents are like, don't go to school for that, you know, uh -huh. but... But want. if that's, that's where their want. heart yeah. is, mm -hmm. and you want to help build future success, let them go for it, okay? Mm -hmm. um, because I also came up through a generation, probably still going on, where my parents and my family, well, how much money are you making? <laughs> I was pursuing the arts, and then I had to fall back, I had to get more education courses, because suppose I had to uh, take care of my family by myself. Mm -hmm. Well, I listened to them. I moved away from the arts, theater arts. I got my education degree. I taught for 30 years. And then I finally got back into the arts. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't know whether I would have been successful for those 30 years in between. But I'm of that era that because other people said, get a job that, you can, that can pay you well. Okay? But that's not, a, that's not how it is anymore. If you are pursuing your passion, money is not your primary goal. Your primary goal is expressing yourself and feeling wonderful about it. And then if you are into metaphysics and spiritual development, what do they always say? If you follow your passion, the money will come. Will come. Okay, it may not be today or tomorrow. <laughs> it may be a long time coming. Yeah, Ricardo. The main thing is if you have a job, you will keep it longer longer if you love what you're doing. Oh, by all not means. Not for the money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The main thing is being happy is what you do. Right. Well, remember we, in the past, we've also talked about when you're trying to do the wrong thing for the wrong reasons for too long a time, mm -hmm. the universe or your higher power has a way mm -hmm. of first giving you a little shoulder tap. Mm -hmm. you remember the story? Mm -hmm. And then you, you look around and you say, hmm, wonder what that's all about. And you'll know that you're in the wrong job for the wrong reason for too long and you're not making changes. What are some of the symptoms of this happening to you? You hate sick. going to your job. job. You hate going to the job. Sick. You feel sick. Your stomach what? Queasy. 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 Tightens up. Three miles away from the job. You know, no, when you first hit the floor in the morning. Yeah, that too. How many of you have had to take mental health days? We used to have to do that in teaching. Even in the old days when it wasn't as bad as it is now, but mental health days. Just can't do it today, you know, because of the pressures and stuff. So anyway, the next step when, when you are pursuing your passion, when you're not pursuing your passion and doing the wrong thing for the wrong reason too long, without acknowledging it and or make, trying to make changes is God taps you a little bit stronger on the shoulder. Yeah. And you still keep doing it. And so the next time, what does God do? And then where are you when you get hit upside the head? In the hospital, In the hospital uh, some kind of accident. Some, well, suicide, yeah, yeah that's a, a yeah, yeah. Or you're, you know, you're sitting at home with a broken leg or something. And why does that happen? Down, down. What, Cecilia? I said, that's his way of slowing you down. So that you then will do what? Think. Think, yeah. Think about what? Do, you'll analyze your what? Life. Oh, your life. Your life, yourself, yourself. Your inner self. Yourself. And that is why people who, and a lot of people in their 40s and 50s, will have something strange or bizarre happen. And it will cause them to have to sit and reflect and look at themselves and life differently. We could have some change on that in the world here. Again, if we go back to pursuing our passion, if we go back to retraining ourselves as adults and trying to train our little ones uh, better than we have as a society. So write down now, if you haven't already, claim what you really want to do. Now, Cecilia, you want to be free, independent, and wealthy. That's fine. But we got to get there. Okay? You want to discover, uh, a Angela, you want to discover what your passion is. Correct. Yeah. Okay, the rest of you claim what you want to be and do. Mm -hmm. Just write that down. So, uh, you just want to do the number one, correct? Yeah, just number one, because that's, you know, we're just going to run through these. I can see my watch.
Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, the so, next. I have a question. So yes, as far as The definition for passion is it mm -hmm. that something that you can do that you wouldn't get paid for if you if you didn't get paid for it, you would wouldn't mind doing it, right? That's one of the definitions. Yes, ma'am. It's what speaks to your heart, your soul, your spirit. You don't care whether you get paid or not, technically. And you get so lost and involved in it that you don't realize three hours have gone by. You know what? <laughs> what? That's what my grandson said when um, he went to school, went to college. Uh -huh. And I said, well, I wanted him to go for like engineering or something. He said, well, Grandma, I want to be a teacher. And he's real good with, you know, little kids. Uh -huh. So he called me, they said, well, they called me, um, his name is Jaquan. They called me Mr. J. He said he's doing real good. Uh -huh. And he really loves it. So I told him, okay, I'm satisfied. As long as you have me doing good, I'm satisfied. With yeah, it. and that's what we have to learn. We all have visions of what we want our child or children to be right. and do. And it's the hardest thing to let go and let them choose who they want right. to be and what professions mm -hmm. you know, they might want to follow. Okay, so the next step, you first of all, you kind of claim it or figure out what your passion is. The next step is you've got to be able to communicate what that passion, that desire, that dream, that which speaks to you. You've got to be able to express it. We have spoken many times about learning to express ourselves and communicate what we want. Uh, Cecilia, I'm going to start with you because yours was a little more vague, mm -hmm. abstract, abstract. Mm -hmm. Tell us again what you want. Freedom, independent, and wealth. Okay, so how do you... Stress free, being stress free. Okay, so what does stress free mean to you? Not, be, not being so... Uh, well, I find it hard, like uh, the lady was saying earlier, that sleeping. At night when I go to sleep, I wake up two, three, four times because my mind won't shut down. I'm always thinking of what I, all I have to do, the responsibilities that I have, or whatever. So it's just a constant, you know, thing where I'm waking up several times in the night. So specifically, you must communicate your desire to be able to sleep five, six, seven, eight hours in a row, more or less. Mm -hmm. That is stress-free to you. Mm -hmm. That's one example. Okay, what's going on in your daytime life that causes you to be um, awake, thinking, feelings, feeling nervous and stuff overnight? What's going on? As much as you care to share, because you know this is an open <laughs> forum, but if there's stuff you don't really care to share. Yeah. It's, I just have a lot of responsibility. Give me some examples. Well, I'm going to school. What kind of school? Uh, customer service and... Uh, For what kind of industry? Uh, customer service rep. In what kind of industry? Whatever. Uh, 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 well, uh, customer service is in everything. Uh, well, no. Basically, no. you have to deal with people. But what basically. kind of industry? Where would you like to see yourself doing that? Well, property manager. Okay, so that's real estate. Lord, I keep telling you I keep making me work. <laughs> but you can't get what you want until you get a plan of action that you can change. So communicating exactly what you want. So, or what's going on in your life. Uh -huh. So you cannot sleep at night. Part of the reason is the stress of going to school, which is a real estate. Okay. Uh -huh. well, what else is going on? Uh, I do have real estate, and I have to deal with all the different things. Uh, because I have tenants, I have to do... Make sure everything is right, especially with winter coming up. I'm nervous about if their furnace breaks down and I don't have the money to get it fixed or mm -hmm. the roof leaks, I'm going to have to get that. But it's just a lot of responsibility about me being single. It's like um, a lot of pressure. Okay, so you, know? you need and to... And if they're going to pay their rent because yeah. you get close to the holiday. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you need strategies to help you relieve the tension that goes along with your job territory. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Is that okay? Write that down too. <laughs> See what you do what we're doing here through if you know individuals, this is how you get to where you want to be. You've got to do this analysis. Yeah, it's tedious, but it also can be fun, you know, when you start exploring and opening up. Um, you know, to, to look at yourself and start figuring out how am I going to get my heart's desire? What do I have to do? And we got to do something because as much as I believe in miracles and magic, 
Am I still sitting here with you? Yeah. Am I out on a worldwide cruise? <laughs> Am I independently wealthy? No, oh, no, no. So no matter how much I believe in miracle and magic, those of you who follow, a, a, I almost said the word, follow certain religious beliefs, what is that uh, expression? Faith without works is dead. Is dead. Yeah. Took me a long time to figure that one out. How do you, okay. What did you say, faith? Faith without works, without works is dead. Is dead. That's a biblical Yeah, it is from the Bible. Yeah. Faith without works is dead. Yeah, so we can have all the faith that it's going to come true and stuff, but if we don't put one foot in front of the other to help it, it ain't going to happen. You know what? No man has knocked on my door yet. <laughs> Not that I'm looking for one, but no man has... A million dollars hasn't knocked on my door. Is it? Okay, so I had to have all the faith in the world that, that I'm a millionaire, that I'm free and independent. But if I haven't taken some footwork, done some footwork, it ain't likely gonna happen. I always go back to Miss Oprah, Barack Obama. They had faith in their dreams, right? Yes. But did they? But they, did they all just fall in their laps? No. Neither for us. Okay. So keep that in mind. So you have to communicate and be specific. So you have to give the specific reasons why you cannot sleep at night and how that affects you and what can you do to get stress relief uh, even though your job is high pressure. Do you have an assistant at, at all? No. Are you in a position to have any kind of assistant, part-time, volunteer, intern, at all? Not to my knowledge. Well, is that something that would interest you if you could do so? To help relieve the stress and the pressure. I mean, there's no wrong answer. Um, no, not really. Because mostly I feel like if I do um, bring some somebody else or whatever into it, they'll bring some baggage. And that'll be more stress. Mm -hmm. but guess what? Mm -hmm. We all got baggage. Mm -hmm. You got baggage. Yeah. Now, your, your thing know, is... I can't handle my own. I don't want to handle that. But, don't, but the idea is, in a perfect world, you would look to what this person could bring rather than not detract from what you're doing. And once you start dealing with one other person, there's always going to be some stuff. Okay. Okay. Communicate specifically. Maria, what's your specific heart desire that you want to com uh, communicate? Mary. Mary. Mary, I'm it's sorry, what am I saying? Not the job that I described earlier? Or the How are you going to express specifically about that position? Um, just helping, helping the kids, um, or not that they'd be young adults, 18-year-olds, because I, I think family is important, and I think that they feel lost because they don't have family. So if, if I was there to help them and... How would you help them? Your role would be as a what? Advisor. Um, a life coach. A, a life coach. Volunteer. But I, I, I want it to be more personal, though, that they, they felt comfortable with me and that, that I was then family. Then you want to create perhaps a title oh, that yeah. says you are a, a life coach or you are a personal uh, developer. Mm -hmm. uh, personal relationship developer, your uh, human resource trainer, meaning, you know, help people go out into the world. Give yourselves some kind of title, pretend title, bum title, okay? Create a title so that you can communicate to somebody else and express, yes, I would, I would like to see myself as kind of a, 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 a human resource manager working with uh, young adults who are in transition and make up a title okay so for the time being that is how you would begin expressing specifically and communicating to some others what it is you want help them see we have to help the others see our vision because if they can't see it um, then they can't help us and we, we're not making it easier for the universe to come come down come in and help it manifests into reality. Ricarda, I already did with her. Uh, yeah, Lynette, honey. You know what? No, what? <laughs> <laughs> I just felt like that. Was I, good. Good. I, did, I did walk into that. Uh, way. But this, like, like she was saying, with the personal trainer, every time I did this with working with, with working with the public, but I find myself like 
enjoyed explaining the training part of it so it would be coaching to assist you with whatever you're going through and my passion is and i thought about that my passion is is the young young the young women of today that is my passion because that's who gravitates to me. I could be anywhere and the youth come to me and they ask questions so it's easy to establish a rapport with them. So it is easy for me to be able to influence them or add to what they're working on. And so that's okay. what I would see my coaching passion at. That's you know, beautiful. What I do. That's absolutely beautiful, working with young women. Because unfortunately, here I go again, what has our society and our culture done to us in terms of enculturating us with misinformation? Right. What's going on with a lot of our young women still, <laughs> urban women in particular? What's still going on with them? They still have lost. They're, they're lost. They don't know who they are. They don't have dreams and goals. No respect for, no respect for themselves or adults. Mm -hmm. um, or authority, as, as it were. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, our, our world, our young mm -hmm. women, and what, what do they have in their head about boys? Oh, oh God, God. Help us. they still are going after the wrong kind of significant other. Now, not everybody, not every young person, but the idea is that they, Lord, this poor child keeps trying to crawl across. <laughs> the idea is if, the, if our young women, and so your role, I would see, would be to help these young women learn who they are, accept who they are, understand who they are, love with all their warts, who they are. And that will help. It ain't, well, ain't going to be easy. No, it's not. But it's going to help turn them. Yeah. But you know what else I want to share with this group? It is a challenge, but um, I've been privileged and fortunate, not privileged, as well as fortunate enough to get a chance to do that because like when my child went off to college, I not only nurtured my child, I nurtured the others and stayed there and spent the time. And these women are doing phenomenal stuff. For for the B28, they're doctors and lawyers and they, you know, look back and say, I remember when you was there, I remember how you would call in the middle of the night and say, are you studying? Where are you? And, stuff. and they would be honest and, and people, you know, they would be honest and tell you, but that was just and they didn't realize it at the time, and I just told them that that was to let people know with someone out here, and your mother care, and she's gonna call at two or three in the morning. Is it a boy in your room? Is y'all studying what? They can lie true enough, but they got so used to me calling, they'd be like, "Mom, we're all here studying," and they say they, they you know. So you like a help. mentor, mentor. And that could be another way mm -hmm. of you looking at your position if that's what you choose. And I noticed, I'm going to uh, backtrack, you said a word, you said privileged, and then you took that word away. It is a privilege to serve, a privilege, you know. okay? Mm -hmm. So think of it as a privilege to be able to do the work that your heart <laughs> desires. Think of it as a privilege to help somebody else. Mm -hmm. Think of it as a privilege to serve, no matter which way you decide, you know, works right. best for you. So yeah, claim, here I go, claim it. Again, you uh, remember this course is to help you live your life on a higher level and not stay down here with the ordinary, the everyday, the mundane. Okay, moving on. So now, Ricarda, and so anyway, communicate. I forgot, I forgot. Under that communication thing, put down some descriptors. Describe what it is that you want to do, what your heart's desire is. Use words so that somebody else could understand what you are all about. Yeah. I didn't do one of those. Well, why do you want to do that? Oh, you left. Right and I have another one too. <coughs> yeah. So your name right here. No, yours, babe. Um, no, that's your name. Oh. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Who needed it? Oh, you need another one. Okay. What kind of words are you going to use to communicate to tell somebody else? And just scribble down a few to give you an idea. Well, because, uh, Angela, because you're still, 
trying to figure it out, honey, it's, it's okay. So what you would do would be to use words to communicate, you know, I don't know what my exact, what my passion is right now, but I'm spending time trying to figure out whether I want to be in the arts, whether I want to be in education, whether I want to be in medicine. And so you net list some categories that sort of kind of speak to you, but you're not real sure, but you want to explore. Always look at exploring if you're not sure about something. Okay? 